the cancer that uh, we've done a lot of work on anal cancer sort of is squat in the middle because uh, all people have the organ that is the potential target for HPV here, which is the anal canal. And in fact, this is a cancer that has um, that that sees an incidence higher in women in general, in the general population compared with men, but they're both affected. And like Anil pointed out, high risk groups for head and neck cancer. The good news here is that we know who the very highest risk groups are at of anal cancer, and these are the groups that we would most want to target for a screening strategy uh, when when it's implemented. So that includes people living with HIV, everybody, basically men, women, transgender people who live with HIV, regardless of uh, the kind of uh, risk factor for HIV. Uh, other folks at, at high risk include women who've had a history of HPV-related cancer elsewhere in the genital tract, particularly the vulva, given its proximity to the anus. Uh, but also uh, cervical cancer. And then uh, the the other very high risk group are people who have a history of immunosuppression for reasons other than HIV. People, for instance, who may have had a solid organ transplant, like a kidney transplant, and they're given immunosuppressive medication to prevent rejection of the graft. So the rates of anal cancer are very high, uh, comparatively speaking, in all of these groups. Uh, and so a screening strategy, if we were to do one, would probably be focused on those individuals first. But I do want to make one very important point, and I'm sure Lillian will comment on this too, uh, is that despite the fact that I just identified the groups at highest risk, in fact, the majority of the cases of anal cancer globally are contributed by people who don't fit any of the risk groups that I just uh, identified. So down the line, we must also figure out a way to efficiently screen uh, these relatively lower risk individuals. But the good news here, and we do have some good news, lots of good news. We've already heard that we're making progress against cervical cancer, though it's slower than any of us would like. We've also made some progress for anal cancer. Recently, we pu published the results of a study called the ANCHOR study which showed that if you identify and treat the anal cancer precursor lesion, it's very similar to the cervical lesion that we're all looking for to try and treat it before it turns into cervical cancer. If we detect that high-grade lesion in the very highest risk group of people, people living with HIV, and do our very best to remove those lesions, we can substantially reduce progression to anal cancer. 